Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. If you've got a modded PlayStation 3, it's worth keeping an eye out for new updates to your custom firmware. Now Sony released their 4.92 official firmware update a while ago, and that is now filtered through to the custom firmware versions. So in this video I'll be showing you how to upgrade your Evil NAT custom firmware by just overwriting it with new update files, so there's no need to actually go through the whole installation process a second time. So let's get started. First off then, you're going to need an FAT32 formatted USB drive. Now we'll be using this to transport the new firmware files over to our console. So once that's ready, make sure it's connected to your PC, and then we can head over to the PSX Place website to the Evil NAT update page. And again, I'll, I'll drop a link to this in the video description. So if you scroll down this page, you'll see lots of information about the new firmware, but at the bottom of the post, you'll get to a link to the release post where we can actually get hold of the files we need. So click through, and again, you'll find some very similar information, but at the bottom of this post, we've actually got some download links. Now I'm gonna jump over to this Mediafire folder, which gives me access to all the different firmware versions. Now you need to download the new firmware that matches your existing installation. If you're not quite sure what that is, then boot up your console and watch for the firmware message as it gets to the XMB display. Now as you can see on mine, I'm running the 4.91 CEX version, so I'll be installing the 4.92 CEX version. So back on the media file folder, you simply need to open up the correct version and then download the file that matches your system state. So no BD, um, that version is required if your console's disk drive is broken. The no BT, um, you need that if your Bluetooth module doesn't work. Um, obviously if neither of those work, then you want the no BD and no BT version. And there is then this OC version, which uh, if you want to try overclocking your console, you can download that. Now, now, please only overclock if you know what you're doing and have set the machine up to cope with the extra pressure. Now, this download then, um, again, I'm just downloading here the CEX version. That is going to give you an archive file. So that's going to come down as a RAR file in my case here. So you're going to need a package like 7-Zip, or, or I'm using a Shampoo Zip Pro here, um, and that will then allow you to open up that file. Now inside the archive file, you'll find a PS3 folder, and that's all in capitals. And if we look inside that, you'll find an update folder, again all capitals, and inside that then a ps 3 updatepup firmware code file. Now if you can't see the .pup file extension, then you might need to go into your um, explorer settings here and turn on file extensions. But again, we do need this to be ps 3 updatepup again all in capitals. So this um, file and folder structure that we've got on here, so starting with the PS3 folder, we need to keep all of that intact with all of the correct file names. So best way to do that is to simply go out to the root of your archive file, like I'm doing here, where we can now see that PS3 folder, and then just copy that whole thing across to the root of your USB drive. So if you just check your USB drive, you should now find that all of those files and folders are in place. So that's us finished up on the computer. So eject your USB drive and then plug it into your PlayStation. So back on the console in the XMB, we need to go to the settings page and then to system update. So it's now gonna ask us where our update files are. So, so do not pl so please do not try downloading from the internet as that will just simply go to the official Sony firmware downloads and try and download those for you. Now, now your custom firmware should block this, but again, just in case. So I'm gonna click here on the storage media option and the console should then go off to my USB drive and try and see if it can find an update file. And here you can see it's found one, and it gives me some idea of which one I have selected. So, um, if yours doesn't actually find an update file, then probably the file and folder names are incorrect. So please go back and check that, and then try installing it again, just making sure that you get that file and folder structure um, exactly correct. 
But once everything is um, recognized correctly and you've got the right version, then we just simply need to run the installation. So after you've clicked OK, you'll get to the user agreement page. So you simply need to use your D-pad to go right and then accept those. And then we just leave that checkbox unticked and click on the start button. This will now copy the updates across to our hard drive and then reset our console. And once that boots back up again, it will then run the installation process itself. So once that custom firmware upgrade is complete, you should be back to your normal modded PlayStation 3, but now running on the latest 4.92 software with all the latest custom firmware upgrades as well. So, I hope you found this video useful to get your PlayStation 3 fully updated. If so, please do click that like button and subscribe to the channel for more modding, gaming, electronics and making projects. I look forward to seeing you again very soon, and bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.